Hi, this is Grant R here. I've decided to do a video diary where I'm up to, so at least you get to see something that's going on. I think the main one of the problems that I've had is possibly in the folding over here of these wires here. One of them might have been pinched, or the other thing I found, I've got the power going again, but I'm not confident. The wire in here, one of the wee pins in there is actually folded over, because it's a tricky place trying to put it back into place in here. The pliers I've just probably forced it back into place. Another interesting thing on the 1290, there's no actually, I can't actually see any battery in there to replace on the main board compared to the 120. Um, I've actually got power back on, so in the meantime I'll just show you just the start-up sequence, so at least you get to see something from this build. And when you're doing anything with power, make sure that you take your time, and you've not got your fingers in anywhere that's going to get electrocuted. Safety first, so I'll start her up and see as you go. just goes through its normal steps here just a matter of interest that's just the guide I've got on there at the moment it's talking about that where the platen can move along while it's waiting to fire up there's a join in the belt it's just glued up with um, super glue and don't get discouraged if you do actually do this it may take a couple of goes to do to get the belt to get it joined up properly bring that down let's turn it There we go, let it do its thing. It runs quite smoothly with, without a load on it. What I found when I've got the platen on it, it'll give a wee bit of a jolt and the platen might move slightly. There's um point out. Of course this usually sits up. Sits up there. see that it's in a ready state now, ready to print. Um, well I've got your attention, a couple things I'd look at changing. This roller at the front, I was going to build it build a bit closer, but I left it a wee gap there because of the PF motor, and as I was saying about the encoder, had issues with it on this one compared to the 570. This here, I, I found that it was slightly out of skew, but just pushing my finger on there, you got better alignment to get around that problem. I've just put a bit of tape there for now to us more of a permanent fix. And the other thing I found is I've had to take the screw out of each side. That side there, there's a screw missing. This side here, there's a screw missing also. That way I've been able to get it to float a bit more so you're not pinching it. It's amazing how two different encoders are different. The other thing you'll probably notice with this is in time you've got a wee bit of wear around the around here where the plastic grapes on there. It's quite amazing how these things work. There's my retro fit work hookup. To there and one thing I'd like to improve on that is I'd like to actually get a plug so I can unplug it at any stage you want to and as you can see the bar um, refit there so that it can move around the encoder I've bolted everything down now it's more solid I didn't get around to painting it because I spent my time putting that, that guide rail on just wanted to get it going um, other features it does a bit wobbly you notice that a bit of movement there but you can adjust and move it around a wee bit. Whoops, just lost some wires out of there. It's done its thing. They'll put them back in. Um, the other thing you see with the rollers, that's how the roller on the ball bearings here. Same with that ball bearing down here. So yeah, it's just a simple design. I've kept everything simple. Adjust lifting up and down quite freely. They're lifting up and down. You can adjust it within mils, one or two mils. Here again, it's just a prototype for version one. The roll of bearings on stainless steel, they move quite freely. And just kept everything quite simple. And this is the adjustment for the um, auto adjuster for the belt. I'll just turn this off a minute. It's a shot of the auto adjuster, um, just the auto tensioning, just an open spring there that pushes against that. Um, what I'd do differently, I'd probably give that um, gap in here another two or three mils down there so that the roller, when this twisted out, because the other thing I'd do is there's a, um, that point there, put a T on it so that it pulls that in. You see that there, sorry? Just put a T on that. Another bit of metal on there, I'll do that probably later. At the moment it's got a table on just to get things going. 
Um, any other things I can probably here just use bits and pieces of scrap as you see just down here. Well, the, the other thing is I weld it with uh, using a just my mid welder. Let me have a look at it. Um, this is one of the other reasons I did this project just to trial just to trial a um, my mig weld on a smaller project. I've built myself a back bucket for the tractor, bigger job. I'm not a welder, it's probably the second weld job I've done on the, with the MIG welder. Brilliant machine. Looking forward to many projects from it. Um, in the centre, just got a rod through here, and these rods you can just be purchased $15 long rods, but this one here down here was about a metre long. Just cut it to suit. Same with that rod in the middle, it was even cheaper. So I've kept this at a low budget. The other thing I found with these building this, you've got a variance in length, you think they'd be the same, but I've had to put a join on there. And I've got the platen, I mean not the platen, the actual thing within five mils either side, up and down if you once you get it balanced right. Five mils difference from the front and back, that's good enough for me. Um, and I'll show you more of this later. I hope I'll get it going and better get a print of it. It's Grant R signing out. This is Grant R here. I've made some modifications to the to the circuit board that was where the wire was pinching across here. Just cut out a bit of that board there. And just smooth off all these things. It's something I was meaning to do anyway, but I've got around to it. As you see, with a job like this, you just hack and make do. And you see, I've cut quite a bit of few pieces along here just so I can fit up into here. Fit underneath, you've got to have it close because of these um, flat cables. I think I found the main issue, issue of the power problem when I had another look at this cable here. Um, about the third wire in, it's actually folded over in itself and is actually touching another wire. So that's of course with logical sense why that no power to that light there. Uh, oh yeah, just another look of the hookup wire I've made do. Another improvement I like to do is put another plug in here so I can unplug it. Might just a long cable right over to the over into the encoder over here. Uh, other modifications. Yeah, with this modification, all I've done is um, given this a bit more room so that it's not going to crap out because eventually with the way that those wires are pinched over with the vibration of the printer it would have eventually eaten through those cables so I'm happy about that so I'll put the thing back together and give another wheel on top here just to show you that where things plug in onto the top board there made holes just drilled them out with the drill 